Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of my Stanley Kubrick Director Series. And this is actually a series that's been on a break, I feel like, for a couple months at least. I mean, I think it's been uh, July, maybe, since my last Kubrick video. And, um, you know, there's been some stuff going on to where I just haven't been as motivated to do as many videos. And uh, this week I'm really trying to turn that around. So I'm doing some series, finishing some series that I started a while back. And... Um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I'm actually doing uh, Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange today. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. Okay, everybody, this is 1971's Clockwork Orange. I'm sure many of you have seen it, but um, basically if you haven't seen it, this will be um, spoiler free, I guess you could say, and, uh, yeah, it will be a spoiler free review, um, actually maybe like mini spoiler because I'm going to be talking about, you know, maybe half the film, maybe a little bit more than half of the film, but I will not be talking about the ending of the film at least. So, um, basically you have Malcolm McDowell's character, um, Alex, he's basically in a leader of a little gang and they just go around, they do, they, they, rob places they beat people up like on the side of the street they just cause a lot of mayhem they you know find uh you know women they rape them they murder them they just do a bunch of bad, of bad stuff it's just they do terrible things but it's presented to us in a very kubrick style i guess you could say where um it's very artistic in the way that the film looks the way each shot is framed the music the the, the um you know the style of the set design it's very futuristic, but then it's not. Like, it, it doesn't really have any kind of feel to it other than dirty, um, just kind of gross in terms of, you know, it's like a, a, a future gone wrong, I guess you could say. Society, I guess you could say, is kind of dystopian. And, um, you know, these, these droogs, which is what they call themselves, the gang is just, you know, some younger guys that just fell between the cracks of society. And they just go around causing hell and mayhem. And uh, so basically, through a series of events, Alex, the lead droog, um, ends up in prison. And so when he's in prison, he's, you know, tries, tries to turn his life around. He becomes close with the preacher in prison. And, um, you know, he really tries to turn his life around. But he keeps having these feelings and urges of crime. And, like, you know, he's reading the Bible. And... Um, you know, he's just, you know, he's, you're, you're thinking that he's having a spiritual awakening and he's in there reading the Bible and he imagines himself, um, as the Roman soldier who was like beating up Jesus Christ. So he, even though you think that he might be changing his heart, he still has that violent urge in him. And, um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting how that plays out. And so they basically, the plot turns into what the title of the film, um, is, you know, a clockwork orange and, the themes of the film, which is, can you, is it right to, um, you know, can you force somebody to be a good person if it does, if you don't change your heart? And basically what happens is, is that Malcolm McDowell's character, he, you know, volunteers to do this new therapy. It's basically like psycho, like some kind of adverse psychology. And, um, it's like almost like mind manipulation to where basically he goes through this therapy and it makes him basically hate any kind of, of violence and stuff. And he basically has a th urge to throw up and uh, all this stuff. And it kind of throws the question out there. Well, I mean, since his free will is getting taken away and he isn't really changing from the heart, does it necessarily mean it's right? And it raises all those questions. And that's the themes that it presents. And Stanley Kubrick presents this in a very blunt way, artistic, but blunt. Um, you know, he doesn't shy away from the nudity, the violence and, uh, some people may think it's over the top, but I think in the, t in the style of the film, it fits. And um, I just think it's a masterpiece. It's not for, any, for everyone, definitely. I know people that have seen this movie that, you know, thought it was like a, you know, a, uh, you know, a huge classic film that they must watch. And, um, you know, like on the back of the Blu-ray cover, Vincent Canby, 
the New York Times um, reviewer at the time says, it's brilliant, a tour de force of extraordinary images, music, words, and feelings. And people might read that and be like, okay, it's controversial, but it has, you know, good feelings, all this kind of stuff, a bunch of beautiful music. Well, it's not necessarily, it is beautiful music, like a lot of Beethoven and a lot of, um, you know, synth style music, but it's set to pretty dev disturbing situations, I guess you could say. And so, I don't know, it is, it is a masterpiece, but I do see why some people don't like it. But um, it's one of my favorite Kubrick films, and any of the guys who follow my channel for a while, you knew for a very long time Kubrick was actually my number one favorite director. So uh, I, I'm pretty obsessed with his movies, and I actually rewatched this today just to have like a feel for you know making the review. And it's just a very well done film, um, and so I just highly recommend it. So that's today, Clockwork Orange, um, Stanley Kubrick, 1971, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and the next video you will see is me talking about Barry Lyndon. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.